Hello and welcome back to the Who Not Do series by Galvanize. I'm Tamara Brown and I'm joined by Olympic silver medalist and Canadian hockey player Sarah Nurse. Sarah, thanks so much for joining me today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Sarah, growing up as a competitive cheerleader, I was always either the only black girl on the team or one of two. It was the same situation for you growing up playing hockey. What kept you motivated instead, knowing that you didn't have a role model that looked like you playing in the league? I think for us in the hockey position, um, it's a pretty unique position because not only were there not any black female hockey players to look up to, there weren't really many female hockey players to look up to. So. I was always kind of behind the eight ball in that sense. Um, I was very fortunate that I had a super, super good support system in my family. Um, I had other female athletes to look up to and I, I saw what their hard work and dedication and where it got them. So um, although it was definitely challenging and I wish that I had female hockey players to look up to, um, I was very fortunate in that support system and, and having that internal motivation kind of taught to me at such a young age. And for me, you know, my mom got sick about six years ago, and that was a huge turning point where I realized how precious life was and how I needed to start living with intention and with a purpose. When was that moment for you when you realized you need to take that responsibility um, so that you know black women in this generation growing up that want to play hockey will you know know that they can fit in in that space too? Mm -hmm. I think for me, it's been within the last few years, um, obviously just seeing the lack of female role models in general in my sport um, has been pretty alarming to me. And actually it was earlier this year, um, probably around last year, actually last September, and I did an interview discussing racism in women's hockey. Mm -hmm. And I had to really think about that because although I didn't believe that there was a huge amount of overt racism in women's hockey, it wasn't a topic that was discussed because race wasn't prevalent. There weren't a lot of black females playing the game. And so of course there are microaggressions and there were comments made um, that were racist. It wasn't that outward, you know, getting, getting called things. And I think that's when I kind of gave my head a shake and was like, why aren't there more players of color, black girls playing hockey? And so that's something that has really stuck with me and made me want to push for that and to push for players of color, black players, indigenous players to get into the sport, male and female. You started that push last November um, when you had that interview on NBC Sports and our sports world stopped momentarily on March 7th. And even though your work on the ice has put paused mo momentarily, your work on your platforms have not. Can you talk about some of the things that you have been doing since you have been pause momentarily from playing hockey? I guess for me, I realized that I do have a platform, um, however big it is in the women's hockey world and however small it is in, in the rest of the world, I do realize that I have a platform and that people do look up to me and people respect my opinion. And so, of course, when hockey stopped on March 7th and then with what's going on um, after the murder of George Floyd and how the Black Lives Matter movement has really taken center stage in the sports world, um, it's it's been a huge task and a huge responsibility and something that I've really wanted to get out there because it's very important to me. It's very important to my family. And it's something that in the hockey world is not discussed and is kind of brushed over. And there's definitely a long way to go. Um, we're taking baby steps at, at this point, but we are behind. We're behind every other major sports league in the world in matters like this. And so we're really trying to take the range and really push forward. Galvanized is trying to help that push forward as well and hosted a Black Women Huddle Up plus our allies. And we had uncomfortable conversations. We took the time to learn and create some action items to make change. Um, cause, because LeBron James said it, said it himself, Black Lives Matter isn't a movement, it's a lifestyle. What are some things that you think our allies can be doing to continue to fight change um, for, for justice and equality? Mm -hmm. I think it's very important to recognize privilege and experience. Um, when I think of Black Lives Matter movement, I have a very different experience with racism than somebody like yourself who has darker skin than I do. And I totally recognize that and I realize that. And so as allies, people need to recognize experience and not diminish the Black experience because they have no true idea and true understanding of it. And so it's listening to Black men and women and understanding the experiences and really, really understanding the systemic issues. We talk about kids 
not being born racist. And a lot of people don't teach their children to be racist, but it's the, it's the system and it's the institution that reinforces this. And it's really understanding and grasping that concept and not being against it. Um, I heard a quote the other day and it was like, racism should not be up for debate. Like we, we have to have an understanding of this and we have to understand that this is very real and very prevalent in our society. Definitely. And, you know, you know, with that recognizing privilege and, and recognizing the racism that still exists here in society, you know, one thing I've battled with is the microaggression in, involving skin and hair, for sure, like you mentioned. Um, and at 27 years old, I'm finally feeling confident wearing my curly hair. And it's been years for me trying to perfect having perfect hair all the time. What is one piece of advice that you would want myself and women that look like us to have moving forward? I think I also, it's actually funny that you say that I've also gone through that as well. Like with COVID, it is completely, I haven't been able to get my hair done. And so it completely brought out a new side. I hadn't seen my natural hair color texture in years. And so that was something that was interesting for me, like accepting the God given beauty that is me. And I think having the confidence and not being afraid and thinking about that angry black woman stereotype, like, no, you're not the angry black woman. You're the confident, you're the strong, you're the beautiful black woman who is speaking up. And I think it's pretty special when people find themselves and find their true selves. And I think that's happening a lot. People are recognizing that, hey, I can speak out. I can talk about my experiences. I don't have to be scared about it. Thank you so much, Sarah, for using your platform to fight for equality and justice in America and in our world in general. This has been the Who Not Do series by Galvanize with Tamara Brown and Sarah Nurse.